I'm a Bernie man. I'm a Bernie man. I'm a Bernie man. I'm a Bernie man. Yeah, I'm a Bernie man. I'm a Bernie man. Oh wait, I'm facing the wrong way. There you go. <laughs> It's 534. I've got six hours and 59 miles minutes to drive. 393 miles. I should get where I'm going at noon 30. Oh wait, this is the video. You know where I'm going. Hello friends! So this isn't my normal type of video. Usually when I head out into the wilderness, it's to get away from civilization, not to become part of a temporary 80,000 citizen city. Well, about a year ago, my friend, who's a longtime burner and has been asking me to go to Burning Man for years, asked what it would take to get me to go. Oh, hold on, tunnel. Anyway, I jokingly said, a free ticket, to which he responded something to the effect of, we can do that. And in my head, I said, oh no, what have I done? And here we are. This video is not going to document all of what Burning Man is. I don't have the skills to make a documentary of that scale. This video is going to inadequately document my own meandering experiences at Burning Man 2023 and try to give you an idea of what participation in Burning Man looks like for your average middle-aged basic bitch. I hope it will also show that the weather events, as reported on by CNN and other media outlets, were very shoddy journalism. Anyway, I'm going to cut over now to some pre-burn commentary on my state of mind going into this thing. Hello, friends! It's your old pal Nathan, aka RevN3, and we are heading south on Highway 97 to go to Burning Man. Why is Nathan going to Burning Man? I think the primary reason I'm going to this, I've seen the art, these massive installations, I want to see those. I want to see the mutant vehicles, right? That, this, that really intrigues me. So to say that I'm excited, that wouldn't be the right word. I'm really right now mostly filled with anxiety. Uh, essentially, I'm camping in the back of my truck for a week. That's longer than I ever go camping. I think I've packed the right stuff. I'm not sure. Am I gonna like it there? Am I gonna bail out halfway through? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not even out of Oregon yet, and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be nice to turn off on one of these things and just go live in the desert for a week? I've brought nothing with me for food except two flats of Gatorade, uh, like 25 gallons of water, and Huel, H-E-U-L. You know, Soylent's my usual go-to, but I don't know, lately, it's not, it hasn't been as good as it used to, so I'm trying an alternative. We'll see how that goes. If it tastes disgusting, well, I'm gonna have to eat it for a week and I'm screwed. Most people, I think, who go to Burning Man for the first time are very excited. I am not. Well, I mean, there's a little bit of excitement, but mainly the word I would use is, I have trepidation or anxiety. I have concerns, and I don't know how I got talked into it. Historically, in my youth, this would have totally been my jam. But I'm a lot older now, and going to a temporary city in the desert, filled with 80,000 people, uh, I don't know, man. Am I going to be rescuing people who are out there passing out in the middle of the desert? Am I going to be rescued myself? I, I don't know. Now luckily, I'm staying with a group of people. I'm, I'm staying in a camp that is full of people who are both my age and also longtime burners. So most of my concerns should be allayed by that, but they're not. Anyway, my hope is that you'll see this video of me talking about my trepidation. And in the next part, you'll see me enjoying the hell out of myself and so happy that I went and having the time of my life. But I really feel like failing is the most likely outcome. So there you go. Safe to say I was freaking out a little. 
Now, I know you want to get into the actual Burning Man content, but I have to say, even with all the smoke in Oregon and California on the way down, it was a beautiful drive to the Black Rock Desert. I'm planning on a spring overland trip to hit up some of the places that I didn't get to spend much time in, uh, like Collier Memorial State Park, Train Mountain, Lava Beds National Monument, and Modoc National Forest, so that'll be coming up in a, a future trip. This section of road had a lot of tumbleweeds, but for some reason they weren't showing up on my camera, which is weird. Well, according to my GPS, I am 34 minutes from where from where I'm going, so I'm almost there. It's been a beautiful ride, and pretty much everything since I got into California has been empty. And the further I get, the emptier it is. I mean, Cedarville. I think that last time I really saw. What is that? Is that an osprey? What's an osprey doing way out here? Everything has been more empty the further I get, and it, it's been beautiful. It's just big, two-lane road, nobody on it. I mean, speed limit's 55, and I've actually been going that because it's really relaxing to just drive. Whoa, that was a big gust of wind. Yikes! Stop the gas station in Cedarville. Boy, what a nice guy who worked there. Generally, and I, and I was acting stupid. Uh, I was like putting on the wrong. I was going on the wrong side of the tank and all sorts of. It, it was. I, don't know, I I got nothing else. I'm almost there. Let's see what's next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I am, uh, well, I'm here, um, but uh, where I'm going is underneath all of that, so I'm going to wait for it to clear up a little bit. It's It's been clearing as I've been sitting here. Well, I'm just going to head over. Screw it, I'm just heading over. Yeah, my attempts at delayed gratification are not great. So here's the entry to the playa. It was clear at first and then not so clear. Complete white up conditions at this point. I can't see anything. Where's my next cone? There's my next cone. Uh, I'm going to the gate. I have a ticket. Five miles per hour, straight ahead. Shortest lane, except for the far right. Go. Got it. Thank you. Five miles. Five miles. So yeah, first they see if you're going to the gate or will call. Then they check your ticket and search your vehicle for stowaways. And then you see the greeters who give you a sticker and a book and send you to where you're parking. Welcome home! Is Thank this you. your first burn? Yeah. Uh, the greeters will ask you to roll in the dirt and ring a gong, but I didn't really want to do that. So I just headed to camp, which got a little bit squirrely because uh, first you could see everything and then you could see nothing. Tuesday afternoon, I got into camp, hugged my friends, and got set up. Uh, this is the view from the top of my truck. From there, I wandered out onto the playa to see what there was to see. So I'm going to shut up now so you can hear the ambience, ambivalence, ambulance, whatever, the natural sounds.
can't really tell in the video because it's washed out, but that's one of the ghosts from Pac-Man. See that tower in the distance? Yeah, I'm about to climb the inside of it. There was no safety gear, no harnesses, just free climbing. Something the anti-nanny state people will appreciate. If I slipped, I would have gotten very hurt. But, you know, I didn't, so that's fine. This is one of the massive mutant vehicles on the playa. We will see a lot more of them later. I didn't get to ride on one, but I think that might have been my own fault. Burning Man has confusing and inconsistent social norms. So I'm out. Walking into the middle of nowhere over here. Um, It's weird, there's 80,000 people out here, but it's very easy to be somewhere where there's at least 100 square feet where nobody's anywhere near you, or 100 yards, actually. Am I enjoying it? Eh, it's okay. I think I'm not really into a lot of the stuff this is about, or that it, not that it claims to be about, but that it actually is about. That being said, I'm digging the mutant vehicles, I'm digging the art. I just climbed a giant friggin' tower over there with, like, <laughs> nothing safe to do with it at all. It's just, here are some, here's a giant wooden tower to climb it, and if you fall, you are not going to survive. I'm having a good time. Oh, wow, this, this guy is right off the deck. There's an ultralight, and he is, like, maybe 50 feet off the, off the ground. I'm going to show that. Okay, he's right there. It's a strange place. So a lot of what I've been doing out here is just walking from art installation to art installation or just walking through the camps. I think my take on this is that like 80% of what's going on here is a dance party. I haven't seen people obviously using drugs and although there's alcohol in mass quantities, I haven't seen anybody really acting drunk except for one dude who almost ran me over. The other 20% seems to be what Burning Man says it's about. That's my take so far. I'm like 24 hours in though, so a little bit more time. So this is called Pata Pagoda. Some people rode by and just asked me if I knew what the name was, and I didn't because I mainly was just looking for a place for shade. And I accidentally found out it spins. I don't know why it spins, but it does. It's gonna be set on fire on Friday. So this is the temple behind me. They burn it on Sunday. And I don't know anything about it. I don't think you're allowed to film inside. But it's supposed to be spiritual. I don't know, I'm gonna go see. Okay, so yeah, that was an emotional experience. Um, yeah, I can't compose myself to talk about it right now. So, maybe I'll talk about it later. So yeah, Wednesday I mostly just wandered around the playa on foot. In the evening though, my friend Ben and I took our bicycles out. Alright, let's roll. Got me a lead? Oops. Oh, my brakes are like horns. Bye-bye.
Unfortunately, my chest mount camera was pointed at the ground for a lot of the trip. I didn't really calculate how the camera was going to be pointing when I was on a bicycle. Here's a sampling of what we saw, though. Excuse the fact that most of it's at the very top of the screen. All right, let's stop up here. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's neat. Thank you to Ben for letting me steal a lot of his footage, which was much better than mine. <laughs> I'm going towards fire, that's all I... It's a, it's a giant flaming up. Discordant music. So these were actually drones. While this show isn't very interesting, I'm told they did some more mobile ones that were neat. And at the end of the night, I tetrised myself into the back of my truck to sleep. Hello, friends. It's the morning of day three, which makes it... Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. And, uh, let's see. Um, uh, ooh, man, my face looks fat from this angle. Fuck that. Set up back here, I've got, I've got the foam mat, then an air, you know, those thin, thin slate air mattresses, then I've got a sleeping bag that I'm on top of, and then another sleeping bag I'm inside of. And it's been pretty comfy with I get in here. Figuring out sleeping in the back of the truck isn't a problem, but sleeping in the back of the truck with seven days of supplies is a bit uh, more complicated. But I think I got a, a, a system going right now. So yesterday, I walked like seven miles in the morning just walking out. Uh, I walked, I'll put a map up. I, I walked from six o'clock all the way up to, I think two is the end, maybe three. I know you know that's the wrong direction. Six o'clock up to, I think, like 10 or 11, whatever the end of the row is. And I walked all the way out the row. It starts with Espinalda, Espinanza, and then it goes alphabetically. And I walked all the way out to the end. And then I looped all the way back by the trash. Not quite, but I, I guess I was almost at the trash fence. And then uh, back in through the temple, which was a very powerful experience. Um, you know, I can probably talk about it now. So let me, let me tell you what, what the temple's about. Um, you walk in the temple and there was some people having memorials there, right? Like groups of people who were putting up stuff for their friends who had died or family who had died or animals who had died. And, uh, the people you know, were very, very sad. You walk in, it's very quiet. A lot of people in there, but there's, there's no, there's everybody's very quiet and either posted or, you know, drawn in Sharpie or memories of, of everybody, uh, everybody, everybody, thousands of people put memories of, of people who had died. Um, and some of them were dogs and cats. There's lots of pet stuff in there. 
and that that affects me and then there was a bunch of fuck cancer comments and that affects me and the thing that really put me over the top uh made me start crying was there was a firefighter and i'm even having trouble saying it now but there was a firefighter who wrote that he was sorry that he couldn't uh, for the people he couldn't save during a forest fire and that just fucking got me uh, and then just you know, reading other stuff on there, I, I just walked out of there very, uh, I don't know if sad is the right word. I, I, I had a lot of empathy for those people having to deal with that. Um, and it was very, it was very powerful. It was very moving. Um, I can't think of another experience I've ever had like that. So it was, that was probably the most, I don't have the right words. Um, it was the most something uh, of the whole event. Um, the rest of the day, I, I pretty much just sat around camp for the rest of the day. Um, and then later on in the afternoon, I went. I decided I was gonna go bike around. So I biked out to, I just biked out that way. And some guy asked me, hey, do you wanna do metal metal coloring? And I'm like, metal coloring? He's like, no, I used the wrong word. It's just, it's just book coloring. I did it at the coloring thing. I did introduce myself as Revan for the first time, and that's that was kind of weird, right? Because people ask you your name, you you only have one name, and introducing myself as Revan was uh, <laughs> that was a kind of a strange experience. I felt I felt uh, I felt like I was being insincere. <laughs> I had a normal conversation with a topless woman. It's weird how quickly nudity has kind of can, can become blasé. Um, there's tons of naked men riding past on bicycles, right? And essentially, that that gets a uh, you just you register it in your brain, and, and you don't even keep looking. Just, you know, you're not not keep looking, but you know, have any kind of reaction beyond don't look in that area because you don't want to see his penis. I don't know, I got kind of, I have opinions on riding around nude. It's like, are you trying to, I can't imagine not getting sunburn. It's not good protection for your skin. Uh, I see plenty of topless women and a few fully naked women. Not many. I mean, not, not. And, uh, I can't imagine that. This dust and stuff getting inside, or inside anywhere. I don't know. But uh, there's plenty of it. But it's it's more like like National Geographic, right? It's more it's, it's not an erotic thing like at all. Um, so that's something. And I would continue to see not much. I mean, I smell marijuana, although I think I smell it less than at home. Honestly, <laughs> if I were to walk that far at home, I'd smell it a lot more than I do I do here. Oh, my hair is like super rigid grossness which I'm, I'm kind of cool with because it just stays that way and it looks crazy okay bye bye so remember the fire octopus from last night well it's named El Pulpo Magnifico and it's awesome I got to have a close up look at the gas pumps the next day I love the detail and I had no idea the skin was all baking trays it's such a cool vehicle it started life as a 73 Ford 250 as I understand it now there's a church that worships it neat So remember I climbed a wooden tower before? Yeah, I also climbed the much less stable plastic tower too. The sun made the metal bits burning hot. This is also the day I decided to take off my shirt. I'm not a big fan of my current body type, so I don't do that very often. I'm also not a fan of sunburn, but whatever, it's burning, man. I did get a little bit of grief from my farmer tan, but that's fine.
riding out in the playa after I took a cruise all over with Juke. Got to see hidden behind the scenes places, which was fun. But, got to see the train. It was like my whole point, I was gonna sit out there all day until it came and <laughs> three minutes after I got there, here it came. So, then I got to climb the plastic thing, which I wanted to do. So, I think I might just make a early day and midday hangout at camp. Maybe I'll find somebody else's camp to hang out. I don't know. I did see some other cool stuff that day, but honestly, I didn't do a good job of recording it. I also chipped the hell out of my front tooth at one point. It ended up being one of the least interesting things that happened the whole week. As you can probably tell, I hit a bit of a low point on Friday morning and I was over the whole thing. So I went back to camp to wait for the rains and that's when everything changed. Good evening, friends. It is, I don't know, it's late. It's Friday night. And I need to make sure to get this down before. Um, I forgot. Because holy shit, this day. I 
think I had some early videos that showed. I, I, I was feeling pretty down on this whole experience. I was having a low point, which apparently is a thing that you have at the burn. I was, uh, I was ready to go home. I was seriously thinking about packing up the truck, and I'm like, no, let me stay for the, let me stay for the burns. I'm not down here. I might as well do the whole thing. In the morning, I go out in the playa, and uh, I see a bunch of stupid EDM rave kids falling over, and it's the worst fucking music I've ever heard in my life. So I came back in, had breakfast with the camp, and we all sang uh, some songs together, which was fun. But it's hard to remember, because so much shit happened. And sat around in the front until two was watching people go by and then the rain started about I want to say four at first there was some whiteouts and that sucked but it wasn't critical uh, it was the same old at that point and then the rains was sprinkling on off but it never really kicked anywhere we're like well this is not gonna come out to anything and then the rain came and turned the streets to mush um cars or cannot drive on it people cannot walk on it they were walking their bicycles they were riding their bicycles first they would had to walk their bicycles because they couldn't pedal because the tires got too heavy and then the tires got so filled with mud that they would hit the if they had a fender it would hit the fender and just lock it up your tire is not going to turn anymore if it hit the back end it would hit the brakes and that tire would move. so we're watching people just drag the bikes down the street and eventually people were carrying them and while they're doing this their feet are they're getting taller and taller because of the playa dust is building up on their shoes. I mean, people were like inches taller than normal. It was crazy. And about that time, people started bailing out and, and coming to hang out in our bar. And it was great we're meeting all these neat people. They're coming in. It was, it was a very fun atmosphere. We're all welcome, yelling at people to come in and get out of the rain. And they're, you know, I gotta go. I was like, no, stop, don't do that. It's stupid. Come in here. And uh, we ended up with the bar just full of people. And it was really fun. I was meeting a bunch of people who were very interesting and telling me their stories. And I was telling them my stories. And we were singing. And then at about, it must have been, you know, the rain must have started at two. And then by five o'clock, the sun came out. And it was still raining, but not as much. And then there was a double rainbow. And everybody goes out in the street and starts shouting and just screaming at the top of their lungs, just losing their minds. And then the, um, when we were playing Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles and everybody started singing, it was super cool. And then the rain started coming back. I just sat with Ben and we talked and people came in and people came out for hours until 10 o'clock. And it was just a really incredibly positive, upbeat experience. I met this crazy fucking pirate guy who came running into her, our bar with a knife, and it was his mud knife for scraping the mud off his feet because he had gone barefoot. <laughs> it was insane. It was really fun. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was a really great day. Which started out from a kind of a shitty day. And I was in a kind of a grumpy, shitty attitude. But that being said, did I need to have 80,000 people around me? I don't know. But... I'm not upset anymore, and I kind of want to come back. But this morning, I was never going to come back. So, there you have it. Hello, friends. All hell's broken loose here at Burning Man. It rained like a mother last night, and it is a muddy, sloppy mess. You can't drive anywhere, can't bike anywhere. The only thing you can walk is if you got plastic bags on your feet. Gone, decided to go on tour because I love this shit. Hold up, friends. I want to note something here. See that car behind me? It hasn't moved during the rain, and you can see it hasn't sunk into the mud. It sits nicely up on top of it. And if people had stayed put instead of trying to escape because of the panicked news stories from CNN, they probably could have gotten free by noon on Saturday. But since people freaked out like that Duplo guy and Chris Rock, the roads turned into a mucky, sticky mess. We have a word for people like that. We call them assholes. I got a full bag of tools, including a bottle opener. And I got a big ass knife, because I'm ready for the end times. Sounds like everybody's gonna try to make a 
jet for it. As soon as it starts drying out today, the more rain's coming. But fuck it. I love it. Th th that group is hiking out. So this is clearly the exit. You can see an abandoned car there. There were many of those by the time I left on Spoilers Tuesday morning. That was actually when I planned to leave originally. Then I went out on the playa to see how things looked out there. Not many party people, just adventurers hiking out to see what things looked like. The man got soaked, which is one of the reasons they had to delay the burn. Those people helped me uh, take a picture. I got a picture of them, too. <laughs> As people are getting their picture taken. I spent most of the day bartending, which, it turns out, I absolutely love. I also love playing loud music and singing at the top of my lungs. I already knew that. Apparently, people liked my music selection, and it turns out when somebody else is singing, other people are willing to join in. I can't show you any of that, really, because of copyright, but I think I'll get a couple snippets in. Sunday morning, we're in good spirits. I mean, I just had an excellent breakfast. I'll, I'll pip it in. Um, there are some scary clouds behind us. But, uh, they seem to be moving by. A bunch of dumb motherfuckers have been trying to drive out of here. We've learned that throwing mud balls at them is a good answer to that. Uh, yeah, we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Everybody's very happy and very full, so. And then we got the toilet service back, so that's the important part. Fucking Muppet. We're talking about religion right, in a right. strange way. Sing. 
And if the person next to you starts to sing, you can sing louder. And if the person on the other side of you sings, you can sing and be the loudest. And I think a lot of people got a lot of joy out of that. That made me very happy. <laughs> I'm still dealing with some pretty intense emotions here. And uh, that's a lot of people who were like, this playlist is amazing. And uh, yeah, they're on drugs. So you, to, you gotta take that with the grain of salt. <laughs> Considering how much drugs and alcohol were around and how much I poured, I never poured to somebody I thought was beyond their limits. Um, I never poured to somebody who I looked at and go, this person is visually wasted. Um, I saw some people were, were wasted. And you know, I've been bartender for two days. I'm, I'm not a good, I'm not saying I'm good at this. I'm sure I'm missing all sorts of stuff. And people were in control of themselves a lot more than I thought they would be. Um, and a lot of them were just sipping and enjoying, keeping a low level buzz. I think a lot of them were very good at managing their drug intakes and knowing exactly where they wanted to be. Which is not one of my skill sets. I also liked it once I started figuring shit out. I felt so comfortable back there and in control. I mean, nobody comes back behind the bar unless you tell them. I haven't seen the outside world in a while. This decompressing is going to be... about it already I'm like yeah I, I, I've gone through the process on a much smaller scope some of my other trips this is, I'm gonna be in for a rough ride yeah that's good for now this is how things looked at about 1 p.m. on Monday the roads opened around noon lots of people made a run for it before then and screwed things up for everybody else Hey look, there's that abandoned car again. The exit onto pavement is about six miles away via nine to 11 lanes of traffic, as I would eventually find out. They call it exodus, but purgatory I think is more apt. Monday is when you break down camp. More than half of our camp had already rolled out by the time the burn of the man started. Pack up day wasn't fun. Knowing you had to go back to the real world soon is a downer. And since I had slept about six of the past 48 hours, my emotional and physical state was not what I would call stable. But I helped get everything loaded and put away, then headed out to watch the man burn. Holy shit. So yeah, the burn is basically the best fireworks show you will ever see at low altitude. Since the man was so wet, it did take a while for it to fully burn so people could get close to it. Then everyone walked counterclockwise around it. Well, sorta. A lot of people just watched. I walked a bit because I was cold, but then I got way too hot because fire. 
This part of the event definitely had a very pagan feel to it. I don't know how to better describe it. But I did feel like I was on the outside looking in again as I was wandering the circle of art cars. Felt kind of lonely. Once I did a loop around the whole thing, I went back to my truck to sleep, but without the other vehicles in my camp blocking the sound, it was very loud. I'm burning, man. I'm trying to sleep. Hello friends, it is 1.58 in the morning, at about 1.15 I decided I've had enough of shitty EDM music that I can't escape, I am going to get up, throw everything in the back, and uh, just go. And so I am the in the exodus line right now, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe 9 lines. Um, brake lights as far as you can see. I'm gonna throw the, the thing up in a second here. But uh, yeah, we are uh, waiting to get out of here. So there we go. fell asleep. Oh, that one apparently isn't abandoned. I'm pretty sure there's two lanes going into one here. Woo! 3.09 p.m. p.m. No, a.m. Um, so that makes me on the road here, the road, for an hour and a half. Um, I got word that somebody else went out and they had to wait in line for nine hours, so that that's not awesome the end of the line always seems to be like only four cars behind me so it's like nobody only a few people are even coming out to do this and um are we like 11 wide right now i think we were at nine and they added two more and people dropped into those other two lanes and nobody's been doing it anyway it took some kind of uh Stay alert, juice thing. It's not terribly effective. I don't feel very alert. Friends, it is 446. If you remember, I got on this highway at 146. That makes it three hours later. I found a new game. We wait until somebody falls asleep and we sneak in front of them. Uh, now what is there, like 11 lanes? I decided to go, oh, I was in, somehow I got myself back in the center. I decided to get myself all the way over uh, to the left-hand side. 
because it was uh, just more accessible and just so I can actually you know look and see what's going on um, I don't think it makes all that much a difference at this point uh, there is a turn up ahead and I guess that would have an impact because you know you have the smaller turn on the inside but I don't know just the middle is the worst possible place to be and I'd at least be able to see something and maybe jump out and take a piss if I needed to I, I, I have no idea how long I'm going to be in here. I, there's, no, there's no indication. So it's a, a complete mystery. But people are falling asleep left and right. I did give a guy a high five. That was fun. He was not expecting it <laughs> at four in the morning. Anyway, let's see if I can sneak ahead of this guy in a minute here. I think he's, drop, I think he's drowsy. I think he's dropping off. It's 526. I don't think we've moved in probably a half hour now. We're completely still. And I assume hell, a lot of these people have just fallen asleep. Um, I made friends with a fellow named Aaron, who's been in this line since 10.30. He left just after the man burned, so it makes me feel a little less bad about being stuck in the line since 1.45. Um, he's, uh, he wasn't able to charge his phone, so it's completely dead, um, so I'm, I'm charging it for him. Although he's got 3G out here, I don't know how that works, because I got nothing. Uh, every once in a while I'll get like one bar, and I'll be able to check signal and see if anybody else has joined the line from, the, from my camp. My distance to empty is down to 299 miles because I've been sitting here idling so long. I don't know how long you can idle. Uh, I guess I'll find out. Well, we sat, sat still for about an hour, and now we're suddenly moving, but it's almost sunrise, and you can see Black Rock City. You just, that's how far I've come in four hours. All right, 645, and we have just passed the greeter gate, or whatever, when they split you off. It looks like they're splitting off in those two sections. We're, uh, we're going over here in this section. And I don't know how that works when we get to the end. Um, open fly over here, though. I know, I know one thing I could do. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I, I've, I've passed tiredness, apparently. Um, so that's a thing. We got to watch the sunrise, which is, I didn't get to watch the sunrise over the Black Rock Desert, and now I have, so that's fun. I am in shockingly good spirits, even though I have a seven hour drive ahead of me, and I still haven't actually hit the road. Hopefully I can get out of here before, uh, before forever. Yeah, look at the sunrise. You can have a look at that. So they said you had to cross a lake and a stream bed to get out of here, and I just crossed the stream bed, I think. Uh, they both look like stream beds to me. These look like people who, uh, who don't get to be, uh, be out here anymore. So I hit the pavement at almost exactly 7 a.m. That makes it about six hours I was in line. I've compressed that down to under a minute and about 200 times speed for those of you who want to experience an express version of Exodus. I will be sparing you from the following 7 hour drive home, it was a bit of an endurance drive, I didn't enjoy it. 72 hours with 7 hours sleep is not a good idea, no matter how much you like bartending. Burning Man was a lot. For the sake of time, I've cut a lot of stuff out. This video was originally 6 hours long. Will I go back? I'm planning to, if only to bartend and sing my favorite songs with a full bar. I also feel like I missed a lot, and that's because I did. I'm told your first burn is just a scouting mission, and that lines up for me. For those of you wondering, no, I didn't do any drugs. I only had two shots of Malort, a couple PBRs, and a shot of what I was told was moonshine by a very insistent and beautiful Eastern European woman who demanded I have a drink with her. Yes, there is other stuff I cut out for content. If you see me sometimes in real life, ask me and I'll be happy to share. For now, thank you for watching the video. I'm shocked that you uh, have gone this far. <laughs> have a good one, friend.